What's up guys, my name is Ryan and I spent the last three years exploring the mountains of Europe and I want to show you my favorite places. So here is my European Alps top 10. I have to say the Alps are my all time favorite region in the world. There's just something magical about the massive mountains, incredible landscapes and history that exist there. It's something that I hope everyone can experience sometime in their life. So for our first destination, we're gonna head to possibly my favorite mountain ever, Seseda. Now it's located in the Italian Dolomite. I remember the first time I saw a video of this mountain and I couldn't believe it existed. The green grass slopes contrasted with the jagged mountain ridge, often covered in clouds, makes one of the most beautiful landscapes landscape combos in the world. Now to get to Seseda, I took two gondolas up the mountain and made it to the top. I remember the first time I saw the mountain, I couldn't believe my eyes. The clouds covered half the mountain, making it one of the most beautiful views I've ever seen. I was so freaking stoked when I got there and I just ran over to the mountain. Me and my buddy George spent all day exploring the area. We got to this incredible vantage point that looked like an ancient jawbone of a dragon. I felt like a dragon was going to come out of those clouds. Places like this really spark your imagination and make you feel like a kid again. That will forever be one of my favorite travel experiences and I hope everyone can witness the power of Seseda at least once in their life. All right, now after exploring the mountains of Italy, we're gonna head to Switzerland to visit the village of Grindelwald. When you think of Switzerland, this is it. It has the picturesque Swiss chalets surrounded by mountains covered in green grass with the backdrop of Mount Eiger. I was lucky enough to live in Switzerland and on my last week living there, I did a road trip to Grindelwald to go see what the hype was about. Anyways, I wanted to do a hike that would give me a good view of Mount Eiger, but I didn't really know the area well, so I just saw a random peak and decided to hike straight up the mountain. I didn't really have much of a trail and I was just wearing my vans, but I kept hiking up it. And after about an hour, I made it to the peak and I was rewarded with some of the most amazing views I've ever gotten. I could see all around me and I had the whole place to myself. I mean, it was just a special moment for me because it was one of my first travel experiences and there's just an incredible feeling of doing things all by yourself. Anyways, Grindelwald deserves all the hype because it is one of the most beautiful places in the world. All right, so after Grindelwald, we're gonna head over to Germany to visit the new Schwanstein Castle. Hope I said that right. I have to say, this is one of the most beautiful castles in all of Europe. It's nestled at the very tip of Southern Germany, right on the Austrian and German borders. New Schwanstein Castle is placed perfectly in the mountains with a phenomenal 360 view of the Bavarian Alps and the town below. The construction of the castle began in 1869 and the castle wasn't open to the public until 1889 when King Ludwig II passed away. Fun fact, he only spent 11 nights there. Kind of crazy when you think about that. Anyway, the castle receives over 1.4 million visitors a year so it's definitely a tourist hot spot i mean i just can't get over the beauty of this castle it looks like something straight out of a disney movie all right so after new schwanstein castle we're gonna head over to sylvania to visit another fairy tale destination lake bled it's located about 40 minutes outside ljubljana lake bled is one of europe's most scenic lakes it's famous for its island that is right in the center of the lake and there's a little church on it. If you're in Ljubljana, make sure you make a pit stop at one of Europe's most beautiful lakes. Sylvania is also home to incredible mountains. The Julian Alps are where Sylvania's tallest mountains are located and they remind me a lot of the Italian Dolomites. I haven't been to Sylvania yet, but I'm gonna make sure it's one of the first places I visit when I can go back to Europe. All right, anyways, after Sylvania, we're gonna head over to the Austrian Alps. Now, I was lucky enough to spend a few days last summer road tripping Austria, and I was shocked by the beauty of the country. From its churches to castles to endless lakes, Austria had it all. One of my favorite places I went was the town of Gosau. It was just this little town that I stumbled upon that had one of the most incredible backdrops of the nearby mountain. I mean, when you think of the Alps, this was it. it. had the churches, the green grass, the mountain. I mean, it had it all. It'd be so cool to live there. If you like driving on some crazy roads in the mountain, I'd recommend going to the Gross Glockner High Alpine Road. It's the highest road in Austria at 2,504 meters. When I was there, I entered the park during sunrise. It cost me about 35 bucks to go in. Anyways, I drove up the road. It was a little crazy, but not too sketch. 
and I was stunned by the view of the surrounding mountains. You can also go to the Pastorizi Glacier, which is just a short drive from Grossglockner. It's the biggest glacier in Austria, and when I was there, I found this path that took me down to the bottom of the glacier. I love the lake at the bottom. The contrast of the gray lake against the glacier made for an incredible sight. After the glacier, we're going to head over to Austria's most picturesque town, Hallstatt. Now, this town looks like it should be in a fairy tale. It was once a salt mining town, but now it is Austria's most popular tourist attraction. It's just such a stunning place. All right, so after the Austrian Alps, we're going to head over to the mountains of Appenzell. Now, located in eastern Switzerland, these mountains quickly became one of my favorite places I've ever been. It's home to massive, jagged mountains that look like something out of Lord of the Rings. Now, to get up to the mountain, I took a gondola up to the top, and then I hiked about an hour to reach a hotel on the top of the mountain. Now, me and my buddy Danny decided to stay the night at this hotel so we could watch the sunset. Well, now we got all settled in and then we ventured off to get the perfect spot. The clouds were covering the sky so we only had about 15 minutes of sunlight to get the shot. Now my buddy Danny, he whipped out his FPV drone and got some of the most incredible shots I've ever seen. I mean, I was just standing on the peak and he's flying the drone over me with the sunset in the background. It goes down as one of the top five sunsets of my life. Just so freaking epic. I just couldn't believe the beauty of these mountains. I mean, it's what dreams are made of. Another really cool thing about the area is there is a cliffside restaurant and a beautiful lake at the bottom. I both failed to go to one because I was just too focused on getting the shot on those mountains. But next time I go to Appenzell, I'll make sure to visit. All right, after the mountains of Appenzell, we're going to head over to Sassolungo. Now, this is located back in the Dolomites, and it's one of the most impressive mountain groups that I've ever seen. When I was there, I took a one-man chairlift up to the top, and I was just instantly blown away by the views. I like to call the place the Black Gates of Mordor because that's what it reminded me of. When I was up there, I felt like I was going to run into an orc or see a Nazgul flying around. There's a little refuge at the top, and it's just a great place to go climbing or explore. Now, when I got down to the bottom, I drove around the area to see if I could catch the sunset. I was able to get one of the most dramatic shots ever as the sunbeams were shining through the mountain. I mean, it looked like something out of a fantasy. It was so freaking incredible. I drove back to the base of the mountain and I slept in my car right there. All right, after Sassolungo, we're going to head over to the French Alps. Now, this is one of the areas that I haven't visited yet. But once I can travel to Europe again, it's going to be one of my first destinations I go to. Now, the French Alps are home to Mount Blanc, which is the highest mountain in all the Alps at 15,774 feet. It's kind of funny because the border between France and Italy passes right through the summit, making Mount Blanc both French and Italian. Now, one thing I think that is so cool about Mount Blanc is the glaciers that run down it. I mean, it would be incredible to go hike those. I also really want to explore around the town of Chamonix. Probably said that wrong. If you guys know any other cool places in the French Alps, comment them down below. I'd love to go check them out. All right, so after the French Alps, we're going to head over to the top of Europe to visit Jungfrau Jacques. Now, this place looks like something out of a James Bond film. So me and my friends decided to take Europe's highest train to go to the top of Europe. Now, normally ticket during summer is around $240, but we got the early bird special, so it was half off. So definitely consider that when you're buying your ticket. Anyways, we got on the train and went up the mountain. Halfway up, we made a pit stop and we were able to see this glacier. There were also some mountaineers taking a little break before they ascended back up the mountain. Anyways, we got back on the train and we went up to the very top. When you get off the train, you get into like these cave tunnels and you'll go walk around. It was kind of confusing for me. We made it out to the ice plateau and we were able to get an incredible view of the glacier below. After we went to the top of the Sphinx Observatory to get some more amazing views. One of the coolest parts of Young Freyak is the glacier tunnels. You're able to walk through these tunnels carved right out of the ice. Surprisingly, it wasn't too cold and it wasn't slippery. I think they put on some like sticky stuff on the ice so you don't fall. While a trip to Young Yacht is expensive, I definitely recommend that everyone try it at least once in their life. I mean, just absolutely unbelievable. While we're still in Switzerland, we're gonna head over to the magical town of Zermatt. Now Zermatt is home to possibly the most iconic mountain in the Alps, the Matterhorn. With a height of over 14,692 feet, it's one of the highest peaks in the Alps and it makes almost a perfect symmetrical pyramid. Similar to Mont Blanc, the Italian and Switzerland border is right on the Matterhorn. Now, Zermatt is really unique because 
they don't allow cars or motorized vehicles in the village. When I was there, I had to take a little train up. When I got to Zermatt, I had just a great time exploring the city. I was amused that there was a McDonald's there. One of the coolest places to go in Zermatt is the Stella Sea Lake. And it has one of the best views of Zermatt with its reflection on the lake. I mean, just such a magical location. All right, so after Zermatt, we're gonna head to our final location, which is back in the Italian Dolomites at Trecimi di Lavaredo. Now, when I went to Dolmites, I spent three days here because there's just so much to explore. Now, Trecimi de Lavaredo is home to the most iconic rock structure in the Dolmites. When I was there, I wanted to get a good vantage point to watch the sunrise over Trecimi de Lavaredo. So me and my buddy George, we woke up around 5.30 a.m. and started hiking towards the vantage point. We got through some caves and walked through a pathway cut straight out of the mountain. And then we came to the spot where we had to climb up a sheer cliff. All we had was like a wire to hold on to. I mean, I definitely should have had some Via Ferrata gear, but I didn't know what I was getting myself into. And I just sent it. Anyways, we made it to the top right when the sun started to rise over the mountain's peaks. I was just out of breath because we just climbed a freaking mountain, but I was able to experience one of the most incredible sunrises of my life. I mean, I felt so alive and moments like that is what traveling is all about. I will forever remember that moment. I mean, after the sun rose, I got some sketchy shots of me backflipping and sitting on the edge. People started to join us at the top of the mountain and you can clearly see that we were unprepared. By a miracle, we made it safely down the mountain. Another one of my favorite places in Trechimi is a place I like to call Mordor because it looks like a scene straight out of Lord of the Rings. I remember I was in a parking lot and I saw these mountains in the distance and I started hiking towards them. I was astonished by its jagged peaks. They were just so mystical and dreary and the whole landscape reminded me of something from Lord of the Rings. I decided that I wanted to hike to the bottom of Mordor, so I followed the path down. It led me to this cave. I felt like I was walking into Shelob's lair. Luckily, there were no giant spiders inside. I kept walking down and I couldn't believe the landscape. Everywhere I looked, I was surrounded by stunning mountains. The sketchiest part was when I got to this long skinny ladder down the steep cliffside. Felt like Sam and Frodo hiking down the stairs to Mordor. I made it down to the bottom and I was just overwhelmed by the epicness of the area. Felt like I was in a fairy tale. I didn't have much daylight left so I wasn't able to explore more. I really wanted to go climb up on those peaks but I decided to walk back up the trail and I was able to get one of the most iconic shots ever of me running along this path with the backdrop of the Mortar Mountains. In the moment I didn't really appreciate how crazy that evening was but looking back that was hands down one of my favorite travel experiences. Who would have thought Mordor was in Italy? All right, well that is it for my Alps top 10. If there are plenty of places I miss, comment them down below. I'd love to hear where your favorite places are. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at Shirley.Films. It's Ryan and we will see you next time.